Welcome into Qualcomm Stadium. Joe Shad, Jason Leisure. We have a new device here that we're trying out. That looks pretty good. There you go. Some bright lights behind me. Yeah. But the Dolphins win again. Yeah, I know, man. How this is becoming is a habit. The Miami Dolphins are 5-4. and four. Cameron Wake was just told that he has won four consecutive games for the first time in his career. Of course, Cam Wake has never played in a playoff game for the right. Dolphins, right? And perhaps the Dolphins are on that track. Everybody is happy. Yeah. Here in San Diego, and the Dolphins don't even have to get on a plane. It is very rare that that happens. Kiko Alonso wins the game. He is having quite a season, a very good bounce back season after uh, some struggles in Philadelphia. And uh, that part of the Dolphins trade with Philadelphia is working out pretty well. Uh, Jason, did you get to speak to uh, Kiko Alonso about his game winning pick six? We talked to a lot of guys. Uh <coughs> Go ahead. Sorry. I got a <laughs> cough, right. but That's you tell right. them what Kiko Alonso said. Kiko Alonso uh, <coughs> had a few things. I'm Don't sorry, worry about I'm my cough. Tell him about Kiko Alonso. I'm Alonzo. not a pro at this. Uh, Kiko Alonso, man of very few words, as you know, okay. Joe. Uh, but very pleased with himself. Called it the best play of his career. And, and how could you say it, it's not? I mean, uh, first touchdown he's had defensively, he said, ever. Back to high school, even. Wow. So, Kiko Alonso, really, I mean, he won the game for them at a time when... Uh, you know they were very much at risk of losing it. You got Philip Rivers driving down the field, closing in on field goal range at that point. And not only does he pick it off, but he takes it all the way. I mean, just a tremendous play to close the game for him. And who would have thought that the defense would win the game? It looked like this was going to become yeah. a shootout the because Jay Ajayi was heating up, Melvin Gordon was heating up, Ryan Tannehill was heating up, Devontae Parker was actually heating up. I spoke to Devontae Parker after the game. I spoke to Ryan Tannehill. You will read this in the Palm Beach Post tomorrow and on the Daily Dolphin. Ryan Tannehill said that Devontae Parker was great this week in practice. That it was Adam Gase also told me it was the best week of practice Devontae Parker's ever had. If I knew that, I would have passed that along to the Palm Beach Post viewer and to many people on uh, on Facebook and Twitter who play fantasy football oh, yeah? and are yeah. angry that every time they play right. Devontae Parker, he has 12 yards. <laughs> and it's roulette with and him, in man. the two games that he's been awesome. But, you know, it's the same thing with Parker. He said he felt good this week. Uh, he's not sure if he's going to uh, feel completely healthy at any point this year. But uh, the thing about Ryan Tannehill, man, is that he hangs in there and he took two vicious shots mm -hmm. and delivered awesome footballs. A touchdown pass to Kenny Stills and a long pass to Devontae Parker. Um, you know, Tannehill is in a spot he has never been in. Things are going really well. And uh, I, I think it, perhaps it's my return to the Miami Dolphins beat. What do you think? Probably not. <laughs> All right. What I found what interesting... What did you find about, out in the locker room? By the way, we're getting a lot of comments from people along those lines, which okay. said about just how tough Tannehill tough. was today. Uh, and please, guys, send in your, uh, your questions, your comments. They're showing up for us on the screen. We'll do our best to address those as we go. But, Joe, you were talking about Tannehill. The thing that impressed me the most about Tannehill was kind of the same game plan as last week. They didn't really rely on him to go out and win the game, but he produced a lot more with those opportunities. And I, and nothing, to me, was more impressive than the uh, than the run, the scramble that he huh? had, the 18-yard scramble that set up, I believe it was the touchdown to Damian Williams. It set up a touchdown one way or another. Just a great athletic scramble, and I know you've been clamoring for that. You've been wanting yeah, to see more Tannehill I mean, running. Am I right? That was that, a designed I, run, but, I, but it, it shows was, his skills. That was a, a run play designed by me. No, I'm just kidding. Listen, Adam Gase and Clyde Christensen have been telling Ryan Tannehill, you are a great athlete, scramble and run, take advantage of your athleticism, and that is exactly what happened on that play. It changes the whole complexity of the Miami Dolphins offense, and uh, look, he there were more downfield opportunities. Kenny Stills mm -hmm. and Devontae Parker got involved today. And Brandon Albert, he either broke or sprained or tore or ripped or something in his wrist. Yes. Ryan Tannehill told me that in the huddle, he said to Brandon Albert, what are you doing here? <laughs> well, and, I can give you some information yeah, on that. And Brandon me. Albert basically told him, you know, look, I'm not going to leave you out here to dry. Yeah. Well, we should, the offensive line has been so critical, Joe, to their success, to their four-game winning streak, and to everything the offense has been doing. Brandon Albert did not break anything in his wrist. He got an x-ray during the game, confirmed no breaks in that wrist. He did say he was going for more tests at some yes. hospital after the game. Probably so. to be checked for a sprain we'll or something, but, okay. but confirmed no breaks, so uh, according to Brandon Albert at okay. least. So very positive news for him. But, uh, but he was playing with a hard cast out there. I mean, that's incredible that he came back and did that. And, uh, I mean, 
uh, his I asked teammates him how appreciate that. Not, I, not just Tannehill, yeah. but there was a lot of talk in the locker room about what a tough guy Brandon Albert is and how much that meant to them to see him come back. Like that. I mean, I asked, I, was, I asked Brandon Albert, how hard is it to play left tackle with a soft cast on your wrist? <laughs> and, and he said, it's pretty hard, man. And then I went <laughs> over to the other side of the Good locker. Quote. Good quote. I, well, it's better than Kiko Alonso. So I went to the other side. I was not there for Kiko. So to be fair to Kiko, we're going to learn what Kiko said in the post game in Jason Leisure's yes. column. Uh, posted tonight or tomorrow on Palm Beach Post. Then I went over to the other side of the locker room and I saw another guy with a soft cast, Jelani Jenkins. Yes. And I said, Jelani, how hard is it to play linebacker with a soft cast on your broken hand? And he said, pretty hard. Yeah, man. right. That's what he, that is <laughs> yeah, what he said. So yeah. basically it's the, the exact same quote from two. But give credit to them for playing through uh, injury. Uh, you know, it looked as though the Dolphins' defense was vulnerable at times. Uh, but in the end, it actually limited Melvin Gordon to about three yards mm -hmm. per carry. Yes. So and 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 even though the secondary gave up some penalties uh, and also some big plays, uh, in the end they came up with the biggest plays. Did you get a chance to talk to Tony Lippett or yes. Byron Maxwell? Yes. Uh, Tony Lippett. Okay. Uh, and then and you know the linebackers are involved in that pass coverage too. They had a lot of trouble early. Very uneven day in terms of pass coverage, if you ask me, Joe. They gave up three touchdowns. They gave up uh, 326 passing wow. yards to Rivers, but they picked him off four times. He had a pick down here in this end zone um, by Lippitt, uh, amazing play. I think that was the one that bailed out Jakeem Grant after his yeah. fumble. Um, and then you had the, the pick by Alonzo that won the game, and I, I believe Maxwell's pick was in the fourth quarter too, wasn't it? And then yeah. there was a fourth pick by Lippitt. So they picked Rivers off four times. But this secondary, man, for everything they've been through, not having Rashad Jones, not having Xavier Howard, having so many guys up and down. Bakari Rambo was the guy they signed off the street. Comes on, it comes in and, pl and plays well. Uh, Maxwell's been benched and then come back. Ben Wicker, he's been in here. I mean, they're just trying everything they can in the secondary, and they've held up pretty well. I think that they, if you told them coming in, these are the numbers you'll give up to Philip Rivers: three touchdowns, 300 plus yards, but you'll pick them off four times. I think they'd take that. It is a high risk, high reward secondary. Uh, Tony Lippett is a young guy, but he's very athletic and can make the kinds of interceptions. Yeah, look for questions there, Jay, while I, while I talk about Lippitt. He is athletic and can make some really exciting interceptions. And Byron Maxwell, who will hold you and grab onto you and pull your jersey and pull your shoulder pads and pull your face mask if he necessary. He says he doesn't hold. Yeah, he holds. He said he didn't hold. How, we'll have to check the records books <laughs> and see how many penalties he, uh, he gave up. A lot of penalties in the defensive secondary today. A lot. Yeah, but, but in the end, he's a guy who can create a turnover or could create a pick. So high risk, high reward. Um, I think here's one thing that I got from the players as you look for a good question. They are very high on what defensive coordinator Vance Joseph is doing. Cameron Wake told me a few minutes ago that uh, uh, Vance Joseph knows when you need to use nails, when you need to use a hammer, which it would be good for me to, to know at home at my I'm house. not sure I follow the analogy. Well, the, the point is he knows when to bring the pressure, when not. Ah, okay. When to make a certain substitution, when to use a certain blitz package. In other words, he knows his personnel. Good feel for the game. He, he, the hammer, the nail. Gotcha. You get it. And uh, Cam Wake has been a hammer since re-entering the lineup. Miami Dolphins are 4-0, and oh, and Wake has six sacks in four games, which is... Really amazing. Cam Wake seems really, really happy right now, which is nice to see. Did you it, find a question? It is. Uh, Alexander Diaz has a question about Jakeem Grant. Do you think Jakeem Grant will be inactive next week? I asked. Really? Talk about dropping I asked the that hammer. Is, Here's the hammer, you man. Were on, wants, you were on that. You to put him inactive. You were on that, man. You were like, look, this is a guy that could get cut. Okay. No, 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 no. I didn't say that. You didn't say no, no, that. No, no. Oh, you know, I said lose his job. Like I meant, I meant job. losing his uh, okay. job as the returner okay. for next week. That I mean, this is the kind of day that can cost you that. Well, I wasn't saying they would do that, but certainly, Jakeem Grant fumbled three times today, wasn't it? Lost two officially, a muffed one. And uh, a and, muffed then, and, two uh, and then had a real questionable decision taking a kick return out of the end zone, six yards deep, and, and got only out to the 17. Mm -hmm. Just bad judgment on that, and he would tell you that. Um, certainly the type of day that could cost you your spot as the lead. But I asked Adam man, Gase, but, and if you are a Jakeem Grant fan, or his agent, or his mom, <laughs> uh, don't worry. Jakeem Grant will be back as the returner next week, according to head coach yeah. Adam Gage. You heard it here first on Palm Beach Post's 
Facebook Live. Unless you heard Adam Gase say it. <laughs> unless you were watching. Or unless you've read it on Twitter or 800 <laughs> other places. Yeah. Other than that, you heard it here first. <laughs> I spoke with Shaquem Grant okay. after the game, Joe. Very upset. Not, not emotionally upset with himself after that. Uh, no excuses from him at all about that. He was asked, did you lose it in the sun? Did you lose it? Uh, just kind of lose track of it in general. Or did you did you hear footsteps? Anything? He said no, 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 no. Just didn't watch it into my hands. Botched it. Uh, yeah, Jakeem's an emotional dude, and uh, very I hard saw, on himself. I saw his roommate Leonte Carew, the fellow rookie receiver, trying to console him on the sideline. Kenny Stills trying to console him on the sideline. Uh, wasn't having any part of it. Someone's asking about Chris Culliver. Did not play today. Did not dress no. today. Probably against the Rams. It'll be you interesting to, to say so. because Lippitt and Maxwell, they're not getting benched. So True. they're going to break Culliver in slowly. I know Culliver was disappointed and frustrated not to play this week. Well, we've already covered, I think, he's not a special teams player, so it's yeah. going to have to be in the secondary. We're getting another one, Joe, and this is really the uh, same question every week. Nicholas Marino, uh, nephew, by the way, of Dan Marino. You hate no, this question. Just made that up. I don't hate this question. Are we looking I at a playoff team? I saw Dan Marino sign football inside the Dolphins. Nicholas Walker. Marino wants to know, are you looking at a playoff team here? <clears throat> I think that if you believe in the Dolphins at this point as a playoff team, you're not gullible. There's reason to believe in it at this point. You're not you're not a fool for believing in it. Does that make you feel better? What do you think? Just a fool to believe. Who sings that? I don't know, man. That is an actual song. <laughs> that is a real song. Trust me. I, okay. Google I do. just a fool to believe. Yeah. Is, if anybody watching this knows who that is, let me know. Something about the wind. Uh, anyway, what was your question? Playoffs. Nicholas I said Marino's be- question was, is I, this a playoff team? I said before the season... Thanks for joining us on the video, Joe. I said before the season, seven wins. After last week, I upgraded my prediction. This is a fluid prediction. I updated it to eight wins. Right. And as of tonight, I will upgrade it to nine wins. Because they nine, got one that you didn't expect. Now, right. nine wins does not get you into the playoffs. Probably not. Dolphins are five and four. Nine and seven means you finish four and three. Right? So that's about right. I think, I think my math is right on that. So nine and seven would be would mean that if you were in Las Vegas, which a friend of mine is going tomorrow, but if you had bet before the season, not far from here, Las Vegas, if you Thanks for had bet that. on the Dolphins on the over before the season, you're looking pretty good right now. Yes, definitely. You're, you're looking pretty definitely. good because I think it was six and a half or seven. I, I think, and Joe and uh, and Nicholas as well, in the, in the immediate future, you're talking about a game that they you thought – if they were going to win one of these two games on the California trip, it'd be the Rams game. Yeah, we'll so see. you got that coming up. The game Rams beat the Jets. You got a terrible 49ers team coming cross country to play in Miami after Thanksgiving. I mean, you could be talking about them being seven and four. That's amazing. If we're sitting here, Joe, at the end of the month. Here's the and problem. We're talking about the yeah. Dolphins having won six straight and being seven and, a four. seven and four. You would have never believed that if I told you that back in September. At seven and four, then you start to talk about is ten and six in the playoffs possible as a wild card? Um, you know, anything's possible. I mean, look at the Jets. Went 10 and 6 last year. They've fallen apart this year. Of course, the Jets didn't make the playoffs last year as a 10 and 6 team. This year, 10 and 6 might very well get you into the postseason. 10 and 6, I think. I'm gets disappointed. You in we have a lot of viewers right now. We had thousands last week. In You're disappointed with them? No, right? no. Well, for not knowing, helping me with this song about the wind. Oh, someone might have. Someone I mean, I don't really care, but I'll look. Well, let me know if someone looked that up as I uh, look at here. So we got some complaints about the officiating. Ryan Tannehill, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Fourth straight game, Ryan Tannehill has not thrown an interception. I'm going to throw some of these at you. Anybody just know about quickly. Justin Fulton? We'll just, we'll just right, rifle through these. Mike Taylor wants to know if uh, if Lippitt and Maxwell will stay the starters after Xavier Howard comes back. What do you think? I think Lippitt's job would be uh, in question, and I, I don't think Xavier Howard is close. Chip something says that is not a song, Joe. <laughs> Just a fool to believe something, something, the wind. Rob Carlson points out that you mentioned weeks ago there was an 87 chance, 87 percent chance okay. of the Dolphins missing the playoffs, we'll which wasn't it. something that you made up, I don't no, think. No, wasn't no, that, that was a real there was, there, was, there yeah. was an algorithm. There was a real probability. And the I'm Dolphins gonna, have flipped the math with some wins that we didn't see coming. I'm going to reach coming. out to some mathematicians and scientists and get the updated algorithm. Jason Stavros wants to know if Jared Goff will start next week for the Rams, the rookie so here's quarterback. Here's the problem. I wanted to see Jared Goff. Uh, but the Rams won today, so maybe they stick with Case Keenum. Nando Peter points out that uh, the linebackers seem to not be able to handle the tight ends, the good yeah, tight ends no like kidding. Antonio They've Gates. actually been decent against the tight end this year, and I have to go back and look. Do we know who 
uh, the Dolphins' opponent who they were throwing for when Kiko Alonso had the interception. I'm not sure if it was receiver or a tight end. I don't remember. That's important. We have to go back. I, to I think game. it was the slot receiver. The slot receiver. But I don't remember who we it is. We have to go find that. Heather Sorrentino. Is j I think she's just mad at us in general. I'm not sure why. Uh, she's disappointed in you two geeks, meaning mm. us. So. Sorry, Heather. Sorry, we'll try to do better. Heather Sorrentino. I appreciate you keep coming back and watching. Jose Delatore wants to know about Deion Jordan. Why? God, I don't know why you want to know. I that. don't know. I, I don't saw know why Deion Jordan carrying a large bottle of water today. That's he is here. The he most is here. He's done in a long time. Chip's mad that we still can't say his name. Chip, that's going to be every week, buddy. <laughs> you seem like a good guy, but I'm sorry. You might not be able to pronounce my name either. We have a lot of feedback here today. Yeah, I'm great. having trouble really, getting through all these. Really uh, the penalties, Joe. Everybody's mad about the penalties. Uh, you know, I shouldn't say everybody's mad because most people are pretty happy. But one thing that does continue to, to be brought up here is that are the uh, penalties. The Dolphins had a, a bunch of uh, you know, pass coverage penalties. They had 11 penalties total for 81 yards. A lot, of, and some other ones obviously that were nullified. Uh, in the secondary, I think we know why that's happening. It's because those guys are struggling to cover <laughs> some of the people they're going against. But as far as some of the other ones, any, any penalties really stick out to you today? Any really bad ones? There was the Juwan James penalty. Yeah, uh, the, the Juwan James. You know, it just, it just doesn't matter if you win. There are teams that sometimes they're near or at the top of the league in penalties and win. You just don't really want uh, uh, selfish penalties. The yeah. unsportsmanlike conducts, the special teams. If someone type Sue, yes, yeah, Sue was amazing. Again, really, really good. He's been really impactful in fourth quarters uh, this season. Someone said it is 17 for real. Um, here's the thing. In the first eight games of the year, Ryan Tannehill, who has shown improvement under head coach Adam Gase, was on pace for only... Uh, I hate your song. Yeah, I, don't, I get that. No, he said that's your song. Go ahead and finish oh, the Tannehill oh, point. Tell me if you, if you can find it. Uh, he was on pace for only 16 touchdowns and 14 interceptions. And he was not rated very highly in the uh, passer rating category. So I, I had given uh, uh, Tannehill a C minus in my midseason mm -hmm. grades. I would upgrade that now to a C or C plus based on what he uh, what he has done so far. Um, Joe, another guy that looked really good today was Damian Williams. Yeah. The, uh, kind of the off tailback. Um, had a nice run early in the game at the goal line, and then uh, line, they lined him up wide left, mm -hmm. and he just flat out outraced the linebacker to the end zone. Yeah, Gay I mean, said. Gay said after the game. Play. Yeah, Gay said after the game that that was something that they had identified a potential mismatch. Uh, some phrase Gase used this week when I asked them about Damien Williams, something about a magnet for big plays. Gase is a really good quote. I mean, I asked him about Tannehill taking shots after the game, and and Gase was just like. Man, that Tannehill's a beast. <laughs> just, yeah. Everybody loves Adam Gase right now. And, of course, when you're winning, that's what happens. That was a great catch. Is you referring to uh, Devontae uh, Parker? Probably Damian Williams on that. She's like the wind. Patrick Swayze is your song. Patch, I quoted a Patrick Gosh, how Swayze. How old is that song, man? Thank you, Marco M. She's like the wind. Just a fool to believe that the Dolphins can make the playoffs. Okay. But poor Patrick Swayze passed Indication away. Indication for you. That's sad. I don't know, actually. Patrick Swayze. I'm not sure. Have, did you see the movie Ghost? I don't think I've ever seen that. No. <laughs> Jason know. Leisure has never right. seen Ghost. That's probably still in diapers. That is a on. great song. I was in diapers when I was 12, though. Look at so. this. Nando Peter said that is an awesome song. Okay. They are on board. Right. That could become the song for the Miami Dolphins. He sang it and he wrote it. All right, man. Just a fool to believe. You want to come back to. to All right, what do you got? Or? You got a couple more notes? <laughs> what do you got? Uh, third downs. They gave up six out of 11. Defensively, wow. they allowed San Diego to convert 6 out of 11. Uh, offensively, the Dolphins converted 4 out of 10, which is fine, not bad. Uh, turnovers overall for the Dolphins, uh, I don't think they had any, did they? Jakeem Grant. Jakeem Grant no, had the, no offensive but, the, but no turnovers. turnovers by the offense. So a very clean game by them. Offensive line protected Tannehill for the most part. Pretty well. He took Everybody, some shots. Tannehill, was only uh, Tannehill had a couple of questionable throws that could have been problematic, but for the most part, uh, very clean game by the Dolphins again. I mean, they just haven't had a lot of turnover problems the last four games. So the Miami Dolphins will stay out here in California. Yes. They are going to travel about 45 minutes north Correct. Up to Carlsbad, California. They will practice at a high school football field. How is that? I did not see that on oh, Friday. Oh, I was out there for Friday's practice. It's pretty nice, man. It's crazy. You should see some of the high schools that are out there today. I mean, they've got like that field turf. They've got a really good facility. Okay. Well, the Dolphins are happy that they won again four straight victories. Ryan Townhill looks good, Jay Jai. We didn't even talk about Jay Jai. What do you finish with? 85? Uh, somewhere around 80 yards. Somewhere Jay, Jay yards. Jai is still very solid. I mean, not, nothing amazing, not, no fantasy football uh, 
fireworks today for it's him. It's hard to expect JJ. 19 carries for 79 yards, 4.2 per carry, and he had a 40-yard gain, uh, so that's, that's half true. his yards there on one play. That but, was but a big he rush. He was solid, though. though. And he had a couple uh, He had a couple of short yardage plays where it looked like he was going to get stopped for a loss, and he made it a couple. He made something out of it. Those are good signs. Thank you guys for tuning in to uh, our ch post-game chat on Facebook Live. We really appreciate it. Thanks for letting me know that Patrick Swayze, She's Like the Wind, was the song that I cited earlier in, yes. in this broadcast. Thank you for that. And we, we are really happy, guys. We're happy to be out here in California and uh, getting ready for the Rams game. And uh, I'm glad that the Miami Dolphins season is still relevant. Correct. It's yes. still relevant. The Dolphin fans still believe that they can make the playoffs. Check us out on Palm Beach Post Sports. Post on Dolphins on Facebook. Right Please here. like it so you get every... Uh, uh, article. Hey Joe, real quick, we're getting a bunch of we got a couple comments here about people want to know. Uh, people want us to give them a little more of a heads up when we're coming on. Okay. We're coming. Uh, we do always post that on Twitter. I don't know. I, I assume there's yeah, you a lot can of watch crossover between Facebook. The and Twitter. replay of the whole thing. You can if always you really get, want yeah, to. Yeah, you can always get that. But we're always on before the game, after the game, and then we do reader Q and A on Wednesdays. We'd love to get you guys questions for those in the middle of the week. And uh, if you're worried about knowing exactly when this show is coming on. Um, at any it's particular usually, time, follow on Twitter because yeah. we do always put put that on Twitter. Yeah, it's usually uh, thirty to forty-five minutes. I would say approximately forty-five minutes after the game. Before and after, probably. Right? Yeah, that's about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About, 40, about it, forty-five to. minutes to an hour before the game, and forty-five minutes to an hour after the game. So we do pre-game, we do post-game. Sorry if you're Jeff not on Bennett Twitter. Jeff Bennett says we don't do Twitter. Ask your kids, Jeff. Your kids are probably on Twitter. I think they get a Facebook notification if they're logged on to Facebook. So go to Post on Dolphins on Facebook before, during, and after the game. And we really appreciate that you guys are getting more active, more involved, more engaged. Um, it, it makes it more fun for us. Definitely. And frankly, this has uh, been a fun season. So follow us uh, and read what we wrote right in tomorrow's newspaper and online. Thanks, guys.